This question is from Bogler Dude. He said, is there a valuation level where it would make sense to invest internationally? Well, and sure, but we just don't know what it is. <laughs> I mean, these questions are fine, but you know, tell me how to figure that out, and then tell me what you're going to do in the way of market timing. I mean, then the valuation level is high, so you get out, and then it's low, and you get back in. Who can do all that? The international problem is no diff more, uh, no different from the same problem you have in the U.S. You don't want to put your money in the stock market when it's overvalued, uh, but you put it in every day, and half of the time, well, it's over overvalued probably 10% of the time, undervalued probably 25% of the time, uh, and uh, has a good growth potential most of the rest of the time. You're, you're playing odds, and the one thing you have to do is protect yourself against your own weaknesses. And uh, thinking you can decide in and out values uh, and when to do it um, is, I, I think, superhuman. And as Gus pointed out, well-known fact, but if you're getting out of the market, somebody else is getting in. And one of my favorite stories is um, I heard somebody say, there's said to be, I think it's $300 billion sitting on the sidelines. When that money comes in to be invested in the stocks, you're going to really see quite an explosion. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. If they spend that $300 billion on stocks, how much do you think will be left in the saving reserve? And he said, Zero. I said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. Somebody's going to sell them those stocks, and there's going to be the same $300 billion in the reserve account as there was before it all happened. It's just a different $300 billion. There's no way around the fact that the market is kind of this circular thing. So you, you, if you're doing one thing, and uh, the market is doing another. It's a, it's a closed circuit. Uh, and uh, so you're then betting against somebody else. As Gus said this morning, too. And uh, I just, I think to the extent you can get the idea that the market is a casino and you can bet and win is about the same as thinking that the casino is a casino and you can just bet and win. The more you bet, the more you lose. And every study that's ever been done, talk about intuitive, says the more you trade, the worse you perform. Of course it is, because buyers and sellers aren't equal, they're equal to each other. But the man in the middle takes his hunk, and uh, that will that will eventually, uh, I think, put pressure on people who are using uh, ETFs for such uh, less than noble purposes. The um, fringe element I talked about the other day that, that make no sense at all except marketing sense, and uh, <laughs> Gus certainly got Arnott right up there by saying he's got a great marketing message, and uh, this ETFs are about marketing. ETFs are about financial buccaneers, not all of them, but most of them. And uh, so they're another kind of big if in the future of indexing, too.